Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a floor equation from Czech Republic. Let's get started. So I'd like to start with the definition of the floor function. Those of you who are new to it. So we define the floor value of X as the greatest integer, greatest integer less than or equal to X. So think about an integer, like what would be the floor value of five, right? Well, since five is an integer, the greatest integer that is less than or equal to this number would be five itself. So for any integer, the floor value is the same number. What if you have a decimal number that is not an integer? So something like pi, it's 3.14 something, right? Its floor value would be three. But if you look at negative pi, it will be negative three point something in that case, you have to look for the integer that is less than or equal to this number, which would be negative four in this case. So that's the definition for floor value of x. Let's go ahead and solve this equation by using this definition. So I'll start by setting the floor value of x equal to n. And in this case, I want n to be an integer, of course, right? Because floor value of x is always an integer. And once I do that, I should be getting the following x over x plus 4 is equal to 5n minus 7 divided by 7n minus 5. Let's not forget that n is an integer. We're going to go ahead and solve for x here. So let's go ahead and isolate x. What can we do? We're going to cross multiply. So it's going to be x times 7n minus 5 equals x plus 4 multiply by 5n minus 7. As you know, this is called cross multiplication. So we go like this and like that. Now, if you distribute, we get 7xn minus 5x is equal to, let's go ahead and distribute here on the right hand side, 5xn minus 7x plus 20n minus 28. Now, since we're trying to solve for x here, let's go ahead and uh, collect all the terms with x on the left hand side. So it's going to look like this. We have an xn here. Let's go ahead and subtract it. It's going to give me 2xn. I have negative 7x. Add that. It's going to give me positive 2x. And I don't really have anything else that has x on the right hand side. So I'm going to leave the 20n minus 28 alone. Now here we can take out 2x and that's going to give up, give me n plus 1. On the right hand side, since we have a 2 on the left, why don't we just go ahead and take out a 2 here and write it as 2 times the quantity 10n minus 14. Now at this one, we can just cross out the 2s and solve both sides by n plus 1 so we can get x by itself. So x can be written as 10n minus 14 divided by n plus 1. All right. So let me go ahead and repeat the process here. We define the floor value as greatest integer less than or equal to x. And then I gave you some examples. And then we set it equal to n, which is an integer. Now, this is the critical part. A lot of times, if you're solving a floor value or ceiling value is pretty much the same thing. If you're solving a floor value equation like this one, it would make sense if you set the floor value of whatever equals an integer and then just go off of that. Okay? So that's the general strategy for solving floor value equations. And there's other equations that we've done before. I'm also going to share the links down below. Okay, so we got the x in terms of n, which is nice. And again, let's not forget that n is an integer. Okay, great. Now, what are we going to do next? Well, by assuming that the floor value of x is equal to n, we actually made a big assumption and that has some consequences. So let's go ahead and talk about that real quick. So we said that, okay, let floor value of x be n. Now, what is that supposed to mean? Well, if you think about it, the floor value is the greatest integer that is less than or equal to x. So the floor value of something can only equal n if x is between n and n plus one. Of course, x can always equal n because if it's an integer, then the floor value of n is going to be n. 
If not, then it's going to be definitely x needs to be greater than n, but also at the same time less than n plus 1, because if x is greater than or equal to n plus 1, then its floor value is not going to be n anymore. It's going to be bigger. Okay, so this is very critical. This part here is very, very critical for solving the problem. Now, what I'd like to do is, since I have the x by itself, or I should say x in terms of n, let's go ahead and substitute that here. And then that's going to give us a bunch of inequalities and we're going to solve them. So I'm going to replace x with, I mean, yes, x with, I was right the first time, 10n minus 14 over n plus 1, which is something that comes from here. And then we'll solve this inequality. This is actually a system of inequalities and we have to combine them with and. So we're talking about an intersection here. And to one of the methods to solve these types of inequalities is to look at this one first and then look at the other one and then find the intersection of this inequality. So in other words, if A is between B and C, then you can safely say that B is less than A and C is greater than A. So that's the consequence. So let's just go ahead and solve it. But one of the things that you wouldn't want to do, let me go ahead and write the first inequality, for example. So I'll start with n is less than or equal to 10n minus 14 divided by n plus 1. One of the things that you don't want to do is multiply both sides by n plus 1 because what if n plus 1 is negative, right? So you don't want to do that. What you want to do, though, is bring everything on the same side and then just subtract or add and go from there. Of course, that's going to give us less than or equal to 0. Let's make a common denominator. It's going to give me n squared plus n minus 10n plus 14. Notice the negation on the 14. And then now we're going to be solving this as a quadratic inequality because the numerator is actually quadratic and it's factorable. So that's kind of nice. So what we can do from here is we can just write this as n minus 2 and n minus 7. So we're looking for two numbers whose product is 14 and whose sum is negative 9 or whose sum is 9, whatever. You know, we get the following inequality. Now, this inequality can be solved very easily by using the method of intervals. Let me show you what that looks like. We've done a table before, but the roots are negative 1, 2, and 7. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the sign at positive infinity. It's a positive sign. So our expression is becoming positive here and then negative and then positive again and then negative. So if the curve is above the number line, it represents positive values. If it's underneath, it represents negative values. And we want our expression to be less than or equal to zero, which means negative. So we're basically looking for this piece here and this piece here. What is that supposed to mean? It means that these are n values, by the way. n is either less than negative 1 or between 2 and 7. Of course, 2 and 7 can be included because they're fine, but at negative 1 is in the denominator, so we can't really include that. Okay, so that, that is the result of the first inequality. Let's go ahead and solve the second one, which is going to come from the dotted lines here. All right, so let's go ahead and solve that one, and let's see what we get from here. So I, I'd like to write that inequality as n plus 1 is greater than 10n minus 14 over n plus 1. If you don't mind, I'm going to do it here so that you get to see what the original one is. And if you bring it over here, that's going to look like the following. n plus 1 minus 10n minus 14 over n plus 1 is greater than 0. If you make a common denominator, multiply n plus 1 by n plus 1, which is n plus 1 quantity squared, it's going to look like n squared plus 2n plus 1. And with the negation of the negative 14 again, it's going to look like this. And we can solve this inequality. If you simplify this, it's going to look like the following. n squared minus 8n plus 15 over n plus 1 greater than 0. Just like the other one, notice that we're pretty much following the same steps. But this is factorable as well. So we can write it as n minus 3 times n minus 5 divided by n plus 1 is greater than 0. And with the method of intervals, we can just go ahead and solve this inequality as well. So let's go ahead and put our solutions here are negative, uh, the smallest value of n is going to be negative 1, and then we're going to get 3, and we're going to get 5. Now, you might be wondering where I get those values from. I'm setting each of these equal to 0 and getting the values, uh, the roots, in other words. Of course, we're going to be coming uh, 
off with a positive value and then a negative value and then a positive value and then a negative value. And in this case, I want my expression to be positive. So I'm going to be looking for the positive, positive intervals here. So one of them is going to be this one between negative 1 and 3. And the other one is going to be greater than 5. So let me go ahead and write that underneath here so that you can kind of compare those two inequalities. So my second inequality gives me basically my n values needs to be between negative 1 and 3. And notice that they can't be equals because we only have greater than sign here. So n needs to be negative one, between negative 1 and 3 or n needs to be greater than 5. So I got my second inequality and what am I going to do with these? Intersect, right? I have to intersect these two inequalities and find my n values. Let's go ahead and do that and the graph is coming up again. I guess I'm cursed with this. Forgot to erase that, but you know, that's the one from the other video. Anyways, we're just going to skip this page or we're going to find the solutions here. How about that? Okay. So what is this supposed to mean? If you look at this carefully, um, n values from here, basically the intersection of these two intervals or whatever the, the um, uh, combination, you know, is going to be the following. n is going to be either between 5 and 7, in this case, of course, you can include the 7 because it's included here, but 5 is not included here. Or n needs to be 2 because notice that 2 falls here and here, so that's also in the intersection. So that's basically my possible n values. And what is that supposed to be? Let's talk about that. It means that n can be 2, which means x can be 2 if you plug in. And how did I get that? Let me go ahead and copy this expression here. We said that x needs to equal, well, after that, we just found it. x is equal to 10 and minus 14, this value right here. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite it here so that you can see what is going on. Okay. So we said that basically x can be written as 10 n minus 14 divided by n plus 1. So that's what I'm going to use while I evaluate my x values from n values. Okay. So since uh, n is between 5 and 7, it could also be a 6. If n is equal to 6, then I'm getting 46 over 7. For x, again, it's coming from here. And if n is equal to 7, which is the largest value of n, then I'm getting x equals 7. Because what happens is 70 minus 14 is equal to 56. 56 divided by 8 is equal to 7. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.